Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factor. Last episode we went ahead and got our product epoxy controller up and running. I'll link a card in the top right if you missed it. Uh, but basically that means we have epoxy, this wonderful library that wraps the recycle review implementation, uh, working here so that we have a scrolling list of content. We see we have a little bit of a loading spinner inside of these different uh, image views as they are loading. Uh, which actually is a really nice touch. One thing I want to point out before we get started was uh, last episode I said we had to have our cap tier, the annotation processor. Uh, turns out we actually don't need that, it's just a, a habit to kind of add it in. Um, but other than that, everything is the same here. So um, today we're going to go ahead and do something about the overall loading state. So as the app boots up there, we could see the screen just has nothing for a little bit and then something eventually just comes when this network call comes back. And that wasn't a bad one. I've seen it a little bit worse where it takes a few seconds to, uh, to load. So we're actually going to implement a pretty fun loading interface for the user. That's, in my opinion, probably one of the best ways to do it. As we get started here, please like if you have been enjoying the content, subscribe if you are brand new, and help me out here. We are approaching 2,000 subscribers. I can't believe it, guys. but. Uh, the channel's been growing lately, and I'm having a lot of fun with it, so I really appreciate all the help and support that you guys have been giving me here. I'm going to go ahead and attach the debugger here because I'm interested to see... Okay, so it doesn't seem like we actually get told here that this build model is not like we get an empty list in the very beginning. We only get this called once when we have all 20 of our items here. Um, so realistically, we're going to have to kind of force a loading state by doing something like... Um controller.setData empty list in the very beginning. And the solution that we're going to go with for uh, loading here is Facebook's Shimmer library. I'm sure you've seen this before in some pretty popular applications. Facebook, one of them, Instagram does it. I'm sure some of the other social medias and Pinterest and all that kind of stuff does it as well. Um, but I've actually never implemented it. I think it's really sleek looking and I'm kind of excited to dive into this. So I think the implementation is <laughs> really that simple. Um, so we'll go ahead and copy that. And then, uh, yeah, to my understanding, it's just a frame layout that you need to incorporate into some layout. And then you can literally just call start shimmer um, if auto start is set to false. So, yeah, let's go ahead and just pull this into our project here. We'll go into the uh, build.gradle. We will add in Facebook shimmer. I'll add in here something like this. Yeah, something like that. Uh, okay, just gonna go ahead and paste that in. We'll sync now. So ideally here, what's gonna happen when we say set data, our epoxy controller is gonna run, and then this loop, or this uh, check here is going to be true because the data is empty at that point. Uh, there is a helper function that is called is null or empty, which does exactly what you would think and is equivalent to what we did uh, the expression we had before. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Um, so I think I'm just going to need to come up with a different epoxy model here. That's basically the loading variant of this product epoxy model. And I don't think that should take very long. So give me a second here. Okay. And welcome back. Um, thank you for sticking with me. So the only thing that I've done here is I've added a new epoxy model. I want to talk about this in a second here, but as we can see here in this layout file, we do just have the shimmer frame layout as our root. And then we do have something here called an include tag. And then we specify layout at a layout ID or a layout you know, resource. If you're unfamiliar with this include tag here, it's basically a way for you to look at your layout files here as, as variables that you can just import or that you can just reuse, right? Um, so we're telling this big layout here that has this underscore shimmer at the end to include another item within it. And then it looks very, very, very similar right? Um, it literally is the exact same layout. So with that being said, we, I don't know how many we need here, right? One, two, three, four, five. So let's just put like seven just to be safe here for like different, you know, screen densities and sizes and stuff. Um, we're going to add in the product epoxy model shimmer. Uh, okay, I think that's about it. So uh, the only thing to note here that I didn't actually mention was that the IDs that you add these models to the epoxy controller with need to be unique. Um, so that's why we kind of use some kind of ID based, integer based ID here. 
Um, and then in this case here, we have product.id, which is just like a number that counts up, right? One, two, three. Um, but they do need to be unique. So you could always do some kind of uuid.generateuuid. Um, but ideally, you want them to be unique from one to another, right? So this one is one, this one is two. Um, but if you were to ever update element one, you would want to submit a new epoxy model with the same ID that has different data. And then only this one will update, not all of these. So we could dive into IDs a little bit later if we ever update things, but know that IDs need to be unique and they should be the same so that you can help epoxy in the diffing process. Taking a look at this epoxy model shimmer, we just have, again, a very basic uh, epoxy model here, view binding Kotlin model with our view binding here, that layout that you just saw before with the include tag, and then very easily in the bind and unbind callbacks, we just start and stop our shimmer. So realistically, this might be it, I, I think so. And so we're coming in here, okay, it shimmered a little bit, hold on a second. All right, this has taken a little bit longer than I thought, not as friendly as it seems, but we do have something here that does look pretty good. Uh, there are a few different things that I don't like, and then when it transitions, it doesn't have the exact transition that I want, and I think part of the reason that's happening is because we're adding particular, uh, like, like a different model seven times, and then we're adding our product epoxy model. So unfortunately, I might need to fold the... Uh, shimmer idea into this product epoxy model so that it doesn't actually change the models themselves on the screen. Each one just gets updated and it's basically like here is your information now. So let me go ahead and modify that really quickly and see if that changes anything. Okay everybody and welcome back. I actually think I got it working pretty well here. So you can see there's a five second shimmer here that I'll remove but just so you can see it. And then as the data loads in, the data loads in, right? And it's just there. Um, I think it's pretty nice looking actually. It kind of just resembles the, the layout pretty well, lets you know that something is loading and then something just kind of snaps into place there. So really quickly in the epoxy controller, uh, well, I guess before that, we made our uh, epoxy model here have a nullable product. And basically depending on the nullability of that product or not, we understand if we are uh, supposed to be shimmering or not. So. We can set the visibility to the shimmer layout to if the product is null and the invisibility of the card view here, the actual view that we end up seeing to that same value if the product is null. Um, is visible and is visible takes true and false as booleans and it's either then visible or gone or invisible and visible. Um, so with this combination here and this pretty simple logic, we're able to kind of hide and show the views that we want at each moment. And then we're going to use our handy dandy question mark dot let here to make sure that we're operating on a non-null product in this case. And in the event that we are null, we kind of have this Elvis operator here to then tell us shimmer layout dot start shimmer, cancel it inside of the non-null version, and then just do everything else we were doing. Um, so I don't know if this is the best way to do it. It seems like it might be. It definitely works and it's not too complicated of a, of a UI so it, it isn't the end of the world. Um, inside of our build models here we went ahead and just defined a few things. So we just have the product epoxy model here with the product equal null. Um, having these IDs the same as I mentioned before is super critical because then it allows epoxy to just update each individual element as opposed to recreating epoxy models or removing old ones and adding new ones, whatever the case is. Um, so this little trick here allows us to kind of update each element. And um, then again, I guess it just keeps our epoxy model clean. I deleted the old layout and I deleted the old uh, file there. And instead we basically just put the shimmer frame layout inside of uh, the same epoxy model layout. Uh, everything is kind of trimmed down to just be the stuff that you see in the beginning. Um, so we've made use of a new drawable background. You can see here there's no text, there's no nothing, there's not even that other little icon here um, because that might not be there at first. So um, we've kind of trimmed down the layout to the exact bare bones that it is. Uh, all of these elements here have a background rounded 12 drawable XML file uh, attached to it. It's pretty straightforward here. We've just defined a shape. The corners, again, we're going to that corner radius that we've defined. And then um, we just set a background color of black here, but you can always tint that 
where being used, right? So here it defaults to black as we see. And then if you wanted to change it to like purple 100, this would now be the color for this one. Um, I guess really quickly I can show you. So this is the product category. So that is now a purpley color, which is very difficult to see. So I apologize for that. But that's basically about it. Um, nothing really changed in the activity other than that delay. So we can remove that. Obviously we need to set our empty state in the very beginning. And now uh, we'll run it with just like the raw amount of time that it'll take, no additional delay. And we'll see how it should look. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> it didn't even really need to shimmer that much, but uh... okay, cool. In the event that it does need to shimmer because the API is taking longer, we just saw that it will. And in other cases, it just kind of looks like it's loading very, very quickly. Um, so that is cool. Um, I know it's been a sh maybe not a super long video for you, but it's definitely been a lot of fighting with the correct uh, layout and um, attributes and whatnot here in the shimmer frame layout. But uh, if you go ahead and pull this code down, it is uh, available on GitHub, so you'll be able to see the final solution. Our layout now looks like this, where we kind of have the main view that we're looking for, this thing that the user can expand, uh, and then that shimmer frame layout that kind of sits underneath everything. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this does look a little uh, nice and interesting and you can kind of maybe use it to your advantage in any other project that you have. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for sticking with me.